Okay, the next thing that we're going to set up here is a, a job for a SQL Server agent. I want to bring up the actual class document. And the SQL Server agent is used to schedule all these types of tasks. Uh, we can do the operating system command, we can do the replication, an SSI a package, uh, transact SQL statements. Uh, so you can schedule all of those items. Yeah, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now, in order to work with the SQL Server agent, uh, you're going to go into the uh, SQL Server Management Studio. You're going to expand your server. Now, the agent uh, service in the operating system has to be running, and you can activate it right from here. I'm going to right-click on the SQL Server agent. Now, you can see that it is running. If it wasn't running, then uh, you'd be able to pick on the word start there, but obviously the, the service is running. It's really necessary to make this thing work. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and right-click on uh, expand the SQL Server agent and then click on jobs and then click on a new job. Alright, so you're going to give your job a name. And you're the owner. And you're going to pick a category of the database management. And then you could put a description in there. That's just a freeform text field. Of course, you can type in anything that you want to. Now, a job is made up of multiple steps. Let's go over the steps here. And then, uh, you know, you're going to pick on the word new, so we can add a new step here. Each different step is going to be like the following. Uh, we're going to give it a name. Now, what kind of, what type are you running here? Uh, Transact SQL, replication, the SSISS. So, uh, let's go ahead and I uh, run an SSISS. And uh, then uh, we'll run it as the SQL Server agent account. And where is the package source? So in this case we can uh, use the server. And we'll use our logon of course then it should be able to find your package once we do that. So I'm going to pick on the browse here. And it, this is a package I made in a previous step. Uh, so we'll pick on OK. okay uh, that's fine. So all that's fine. Uh, so that's that step. And we, there's the other things you can configure about that. You, you'd have to go through these. But most of these really don't apply. Sometimes they might, but in this case they really don't. Uh, in this case, we're going to pick on OK. And now that's that step. The job can also have more than one step. We can pick on New again and add an additional step, as we can see, as many as you wanted to per job. And maybe this one is going to be an operating system command, or you're going to run a, 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 a transact SQL, or maybe a replication. Uh, so you can see that this job can contain many steps, and each one will be configured in that way. Actually, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to go back and, and um, get rid of this particular step, and we just have step one. So you add your steps in. Uh, now you want to schedule this job, so we'll pick on schedule. We'll add a new schedule, and uh, we're, we're going to call this um, daily. And we're going to make it recurring, or it could be one time, it could be automatically, or when, whenever the CPO becomes idle. All right, so you can actually make it wait for the uh, for downtime in this way. Uh, we're going to make it recurring. We're going to make it daily, and you can see how easy it is to use the scheduling screen. Uh, but you want to show this in the class. You, you certainly uh, want to set up at least one of these. So we'll, we'll make it run every day. At 12 a.m. is fine, and then you put the start date and the end date. I'm going to click on OK. And it's kind of interesting that there is the daily schedule. The same job can have more than one schedule, as we can see. Uh, we'll, we'll pick on new there, and then we can add it monthly or weekly. The same job can be scheduled multiple times. Now, the alerts are going to occur uh, if the job uh, has a problem. So we're going to pick on a, a, a new alert here. And we'll call it alert one. You give it a name, of course. And uh, we're looking for a SQL Server event or a performance condition. 
And the database name could be all databases, or you can, you can pick a specific database if something goes wrong. And then you can actually program it to look for a specific error number, okay? Uh, or severity, either one. Right? Whichever that you might be looking for. And then, uh, so, or you can, you can also kick off the alert if the message contains a certain piece of text. Uh, now, with the alert, you have to have a response. And with the response, you need an operator. Right? An operator would be an individual, so we'll pick on new operator. And uh, we'll call this one, I want to type in myself, put in the email address. And um, if we have a net send, that's fine. If we have a pager, that's fine. So. Uh, we just set up an operator and that person is enabled. And then you, you can even uh, find the type of notifications, but we'll just use that operator and we'll click on OK. Now that operator is in there, and then for the option, uh, we, we're going to say we're going to email that person. And we'll pick on options and we'll say uh, email and maybe some additional text. Whatever the text might be. Okay. All right, so that's going to be an alert, uh, just in case um, something goes wrong with the job. And actually, I, I want to give it a different name called um, Alert Five. And now it took that. Uh, now, notification can be run if the job succeeds or fails, as we can see. So, on the email, now this is actually going to use the operators. You set the operators in that previous screen, and you can do these when the job succeeds, or when the job fails, or when it completes. Or we can also send pages or net send uh, in this case. So, uh, an alert only happens if the job goes in a, in a bad direction. The notification can be sent if it's uh, a succeed, a fail, or a complete. Uh, so we're done with that, and we're done with that. Uh, so that's how we set up our SQL Server agent job. I'm going to click on OK here.